Thank you very much. My name is Ishu Chimiyako. Uh, Professor Yoshioka has spoken a lot uh, about me and my work already. And uh, it's indeed more or less the first time for me to speak in front of such a, a great gathering. Especially, I am from Kanto, Tokyo area, so I didn't know much about Kyoto Prize. So I accepted the offer for invitation to speak at this uh, symposium, but I feel a bit nervous, but I try my best uh, in my talk. I am a photographer. But I have never been trained uh, to take photograph. Um, I learned to take photograph uh, through uh, doing myself. And I think uh, we are still in the process of making history uh, for photography. And it's been about 40 years since I began uh, photography. But still, I feel that I am very uh, fresh in doing photography. And as uh, Professor Yoshioka mentioned, uh, since 2007, I have been photographing Hiroshima as my main projects. And why uh, do I feel that I have to photograph Hiroshima? Why am I still doing this? It relates to the Yokosum Yokosuka story, the very first project I did as a photographer. And I loved doing uh, darkroom work. Rather than taking photography, I uh, decided to take photos because I wanted to work in dark room. I loved uh, these uh, grains and the particles of photography, and uh, that fascinated me. So I had such an urge to take photographs, otherwise I cannot develop uh, in the dark room. So first I was uh, taking the natural objects such as trees and ocean and so forth. And I began to think that I have to take photographs of something more concrete. And one thing came to my mind. Where is the city which is most, most distant from me? And uh, which is the city where I had the most serious injuries and hurt? And uh, that is Yokosuka. Uh, when I entered the elementary school at the age of six, uh, I moved to Yokosuma, uh, Yokosuka uh, from Guma Prefecture. Uh, Guma is a landlocked city, but Yokosuka uh, here is uh, nearby uh, Tokyo Bay on a coast. And one important feature of this city is the presence of the American military base. So from six years old to 19 years old, I spent my life of that time, uh, adolescence, uh, where I had a lot of uh, growth, uh, physical and uh, psychological, in the city of Yokosuka uh, with a big American military base. And as an outsider, I came to see and find many things. And so this is the first photography project called Yokosuka Story. It just happened that around that time, a Japanese pop song by Yamaguchi Momoe, Yokosuka Story, was very popular among the Japanese people. So uh, Yokosuka Story, uh, well, actually, this is not a title I myself gave to this uh, debut series of my photography. I decided to take those photographs now entitled Yokosuka Story by someone else. So those are the Yokosuka Story uh, photographs. Well, Yokosuka, as I said, is a city of the U.S. military base. So in a sense, um, uh, people tend to look at those uh, images as something like a documentary uh, with some social issues and understanding behind. Uh, but um, uh, Thomas Shomei and Moriyama Daizo are very famous uh, photographers from Japan. Their Yokosuka uh, photos are about uh, gata alleys where American military men uh, were found in many numbers. Actually, when I was small, elementary school, I was told by my parents not to walk on this uh, uh, gata alley street because of fear of being raped. So it was considered as a very dangerous area. Uh, so that was Gata Ali. So 
Uh, when I strolled around in the uh, street of Yokosuka uh, for the first time with the camera, I was so afraid of that district. So I really couldn't take photos because that was the area where I was told not to go to by my parents. So even if I was carrying a camera myself, I couldn't take uh, photos in that area. So that was the kind of traumas I con sustained by me. Uh, I lived in Yokosuka, as I mentioned, but I didn't know all the streets or districts in Yokohama, Yokosuka, so I bought a map and I placed a mark on the map uh, whenever I took a certain photograph uh, in Yokosuka. So this is the Gara Ali where girls were told not to walk. So this is a photo a long time ago. Uh, uh, Afro-American soldier and a Japanese girl are walking together. Uh, I think that was the Christmas day. Uh, today you don't see those things, but uh, you can see a series of uh, flags, national flags, flying in the sky. So in the past, uh, we used to see such strings of uh, flags, but today uh, Garu Ali is not what it used to be. It's such a bright uh, a street, uh, not dangerous at all, very healthy, and Yokosuka city as a whole has become a very sunny place, at least on the surface, but it goes really deeper in the meaning. So my footsteps, my journey, my past, part of it, important part of it, lies in Yokosuka. Suka, and I wanted to settle, uh, come to terms with my past. And uh, my debut as a photographer is somewhat late. Uh, in, the 30, in the 30s, I began serious uh, photography taking. I uh, was not trained as a photographer, so I went through trial and errors as a photographer. So uh, I took photos of Yokosuka, and this is uh, a Ali I talked about. Uh, and for me, this is not a record. This is my memory. That's how I see my photos. How do I recall my memories and how I am going to take a good, serious, honest look at my past journey? And that's how I began to take photograph. And that's how I regarded my photograph taking and uh, this is not me, this little girl, but uh, this girl recalls me when I was small. This girl came running toward me and I uh, snaps, took this snapshot of her. Of course, she is now perhaps 40 years old or so. Uh, when I was taking a photograph of Yokosuka, what I was thinking was as follows. I wanted to take a serious look at my past, my journey. And by so doing, I wanted to seriously think how my present and future are going to unfold itself in front of me. So this is a sort of a cliff, a slope uh, in the alley I mentioned earlier, a very nicely uh, tile. And uh, uh, even today, this uh, building stands, uh, and it says the U.S. Navy up there. And when I, whenever I go to Yokosuka, I go to this place and say greetings to this building. Hey, you are still there, I say to this building. Uh, so this building still exists. It gives me a sort of a strange feeling, but uh, if you go to the Kato Ali in Yokosuka, you can st still find this uh, very old building. This is a room in EM Club, which stands for an Enlisted Men's Club, uh, an entertainment club for the American soldiers in Yokosuka. So this is where uh, the jazz music in Japan began. And this is a place um, a Japanese were allowed to enter even only when they were accompanied uh, by Americans. Uh, but in the 1990s, uh, this club was uh, demolished, and uh, when I took this photograph, it was closed down for about 10 years, it was really abandoned and derelict, and then it was demolished officially. And this EM club 
enlisted men's club is part of uh, the uh, point of origin for my life. Uh, my high school friend uh, got engaged with an American uh, soldier and uh, she wanted to introduce her uh, boyfriend to me uh, and uh, uh, we went to this theater together to see a f uh, film. And uh, for the first time I met uh, him, he was in a uniform and the uh, three of us together sat in the theater and uh, saw the film. And the first image we saw in the theater projection is the American uh, national flag. Uh, stars and Stripes, a very big uh, image of the Stars and Stripes uh, swaying uh, in uh, the projection and uh, there was uh, the American National Anthem played in the theater and I didn't know how to express it. I, I really felt hurt. I am here in Japan and here it's like, Ameri like America. W where am I? Why am I here? I was 18 years old and I felt hurt. And that was a trauma for me, and since then, uh, that trauma has stayed uh, deep inside my heart. So when I uh, revisited Yokosuka uh, at the age of 18, and this is the second time I went to, and it was one month before the building was demolished, and I felt an urge that I had to take a photograph of this. So the buildings encapsulates a uh, time past and this building was waiting for the time of demolish being demolished and this uh, building had a, a rather bad memory for me but i felt a sort of um uh, affection toward this building i felt that this building uh, captures time past and uh, right before the demolition of this building, I entered into this uh, derelict building EM club. After an absence of many years, this is my mother. Uh, at 23 years old. Uh, before war, at the age of 18, well, actually, she was born in 1916, and at the age of 18, she got a driver's license. So it was before World War II. How can I put this? Uh, she is was from a family of once a rich farmer. Uh, but when uh, she was born, the family was already poor, and the family had many uh, children, and she was uh, given to an adopted family that was a store, and she w was about to be forced into a marriage with a, a leading uh, a member of a store, uh, and uh, she uh, was uh, given to that adopted family uh, on the condition that she would be able to go to a girls' school or college. Uh, of course, uh, my mother had uh, no idea of uh, getting married this man, and she uh, fled from that adopted family's house and uh, uh, go back to her own family. But her family was already very poor, so she had to find out the way to make money. And she told uh, her parents that she wanted to get a driver's license, and this is in Gunma Prefecture, a countryside. And uh, she was the second uh, woman who got the driver's license. The first woman I got a driver's license, but she didn't drive almost at all. And uh, she had to uh, take a driver's license in order to work. And she uh, was a taxi driver, a professional taxi driver. And around that time, uh, the cars in Japan were uh, foreign cars. And this is uh, 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 Chrysler's uh, car uh, of 1953. And she had this uh, driver's license when the father, uh, she met uh, my uh, father uh, at the workplace and my father for various uh, financial economic troubles uh, came to Yokosuka uh, living away from my mother and uh, uh, 
Actually, my mother also uh, draw, drove jeeps for American soldiers. And actually, uh, the U.S. military was hiring a lot of women drivers for um, women drivers hired to drive uh, military jeeps. And my mother had no job after uh, we all moved to Yokosuka. So right after we moved, she began driving jeeps for American soldiers. So in a sense, Yokosuka uh, received a certain benefits from the presence of American military. But in a sense, uh, Yokosuka was a place which gave me a great culture shock of various uh, meanings and perspectives. But it really carried a very heavy meaning in implications for me. And my mother died in 2000. And actually, I wasn't communicating very well uh, with my mother. I didn't know how to communicate well with my mother. And uh, before her death five years ago, um, uh, my father died. And then five years later, uh, my mother died. So when I wanted to speak to her, she was already dead. That's why. I decided to take a photograph of items that she left. So these are the things which are left behind. And uh, I was starting to take these uh, photos um, as, as if I am speaking with her. So this is an adventure. Uh, this is not really usually uh, regarded as a memento, but uh, this danger um, has uh, some sense of attachment in myself, and there are many dangers like these. So those are things left behind, but um, there's no mouse to use this danger anymore. And in a previous picture, they used lipstick, and uh, there are no lips uh, for which this uh, lipstick is used, but and these are the things which are which were used by my mother, and those still exist in front of me myself, and I uh, felt something. That's why I started taking these uh, photos, and in year two thousand five, so after my mother died, so five years after my mother died. I joined the uh, uh, Venice uh, Biennale, and commissioner was um, uh, Kasahara-san, and uh, she was the third female commissioner. And the first and second female commissioner, well, the, uh, they didn't use any uh, female artist, but uh, she, as a third commissioner, invited me. And Kasahara san, a commissioner, a female, a third female commissioner, and I myself, as the first the female artist, called upon by a female commissioner. So we went to the uh, uh, Venice uh, Viennale, and uh, this was used as a porta. And uh, I was there for about six months. I went there or to uh, Venice for three times. This exhibition was there for about six months. And my mother doesn't like to show uh, her dentures or her underwears like this. But then I decided to use uh, these uh, works in uh, Japan Pavilion of Venice Viennale in 2005. And as I say, I went to the Venice myself three times, and I felt like my mother was uh, breathing the air of uh, Venice, and my mother, I felt, uh, seems to be joining, uh, enjoying the environment of Venice, uh, the Venice, and those pictures. Uh, became independent. They started to take their own life, and uh, this used to uh, this used uh, to belong to my mother. But uh, this uh, object and garment uh, 
we became something which belonged to any mother. So it started to uh, carry some kind of uh, universality, and this uh, follows how they became become independent. And I believe uh, great works uh, often started to take on their own life, take on their own life. And my mother had a, a burn, very severe um, burn, and she was cooking by using an oil, and she got uh, oil, and uh, she got the burn, and and she actually threw uh, the oil, which is on fire, onto the uh, backyard. At, at that time, she got this burn. And I had a series, another series which is called the Scars, and I was taking photographs of uh, scars, bruises on human bodies. And I wanted to t take scars of my mother, but then um, I couldn't find any opportunity, but when she became 84 years old, on the day of birthday, I asked her to take photo of her scars, and she said, oh, yes. And then I took this picture. And around that time, well, there is a museum, Okama Totaro Museum, in Kawasaki City, and it's exhibited our works, which are related to on earthquakes, and my mother experienced the Kanto Great Earthquake and also Hanshin Awaji Great Earthquakes. And this burn, or this scar itself, is not related to these disasters, earthquakes, uh, but through these scars of my mother's body that the uh, I take these pictures, and on September 1st, this is the first day of Okamoto Taro, an exhibition I discussed. And she was, my mother was already uh, in hospital, hospitalized, and he, she got um, hepatitis C, and because of the blood transfusion. And then uh, she died in December, in three months. So this car was taken just before she uh, died. So I myself, I was not prepared, I was not ready to accept my mother's death, and I had a great sense of loss and I couldn't figure out how I can mend my mental hurt, mental uh, scars. And then I uh, took uh, those uh, uh, photos I showed before when she returned from the uh, incineration facility. And in 2006, after the 2005 uh, Venice Viennale, uh, there was another exhibition at Tokyo, a museum in Tokyo, and so next, uh, I was approached um, by a person saying, why don't you take a photo of Hiroshima? I was a little bit surprised, but an, an editor who wanted to uh, create a collection of photographs, so this editor approached me and asking, why don't you take photographs? And I asked why, why should I take a photos? And he said, only art will stay in Hiroshima. Only art will uh, remain in Hiroshima. And I didn't uh, go to Hiroshima. I didn't have any time to go to Hiroshima at that time because I didn't want to go to Hiroshima for sightseeing and uh, many uh, photographers are dealing with Hiroshima. Therefore, uh, almost all the expressions concerning Hiroshima were already there. So I thought uh, there's nothing left 
if I go to Hiroshima, there's nothing left for me to photograph. But I have never been there to uh, Hiroshima. Therefore, I just uh, thought I should try. And I went to Hiroshima in 2007. This was the first trip to Hiroshima for myself. And I went to the uh, Hiroshima Peace uh, Memorial Museum. This is official name of this museum, but I call it an atomic bomb museum. And in, if you go to Hiroshima, uh, there are many uh, facilities or streets of which names include peace, like a peace museum, peace street, a peace whatever. And I feel I felt it a little bit odd. And then I took a picture of this picture. This picture was posted next to a shop in the Hiroshima Peace uh, Memorial Museum. And I don't know uh, why, but uh, anyway, this picture was uh, torn in, in the middle and that is uh, taped. And this was taken in fall 1945 by American soldier. This is part of 360 degree panorama picture. So this picture had uh, such uh, a scar in itself, the, it had a tear, and uh, somehow I, I was attracted, so I photographed this picture. And I went to a Hiroshima Dome. I saw that dome is quite small, and Hiroshima Dome is a symbol of anti-war activities. And I had a different and impressions on Hiroshima Dome or different images of Hiroshima Dome. And I went to the Hiroshima Dome. I thought, oh, this dome is smaller than I saw. It's kind of cute. So I thought I might be able to photograph Hiroshima. I like this uh, one-piece dress. I don't wear it, but uh, I like a uh, garment like this one. And uh, there's a database, and everybody can access the database of these uh, photographs. And uh, I picked out the um, those and um, one piece type of dresses from the database. And this is one of the first pictures I took. I call it a Commode Garçon. Why I call it? Uh, because uh, we don't know who uh, contributed this garment to the museum. And Hiroshima cannot exhibit on this kind of garment if uh, they don't know who gave this garment to the museum. And why they don't have any uh, names of the owners of those garments is because uh, those uh, garments which survived at atomic bomb were uh, bestowed to the uh, museum in an area phase. Therefore, there's no uh, uh, data taking exercises around that time. And Kawakubo Ray of uh, Comedy Garçon in the Paris collection um, presented a uh, dress and it's called like Gamebuck Look. And she actually presented a uh, little bit shabby um, one piece sundresses. And they are called like a game back look. And that's why I call it a uh, common day girl song. And I was a little bit surprised when I looked at these um, items which are left behind because quality of garment is very high and design is very good. And I was uh, studying textile and weaving when I was a student. So I know textile better than other people, how it is made, how it is we, uh, we, uh, woven. And those ungarments, and I didn't see those ungarments in color, so I saw those pictures. They are only always in black and white. But I actually went there and I saw them and those are in color. I saw they are so cool and fashionable. And uh, those are where were those garments? Are just not ordinary. And I saw if I had been in Hiroshima on that day in August, 
1945 in Hiroshima, I could have been the one who wore this、uh, garment. And、uh, that was、uh, kind of a sense I felt, and、uh, I decided to take these、uh, photos. And this is a part of a blouse. So, of course, I need the help when d o i n g my work, and there is an assistant curator at the museum. And、uh, she、uh, works with me all the time when I go to the museum. And、uh, warrants and hooks, gloves and socks. And she s a y You are the first person who photographed these items. And I like these details. And this button itself is designed after a rose flower. I saw this is fashionable, this is cool. And this curator said that、uh, she didn't notice those、uh, beauty or those、uh, small details of the items. And that is, of course, a great thing. And I use a 35 millimeter freehand, and it's very easy to go to different、um, d i s t a n c e from those items. So I don't use any、uh, tripod and legs, and I just、uh, use a hand freestyle. Take photos. This is a wristwatch. So, Hiroshima used to be a military port, and、uh, Hiroshima is basically open to the overseas because it's had a port, so it's had、um, trade connections or other connections with overseas. So, this watch could have been imported from overseas to Japan, and I believe this is cool. And this one is an ivory made、um, eyeglasses. This eyeglass is broken, and this、uh, was separately、uh, stored, but I just、uh, set them up in this、um, arrangement, into this arrangement, and, and photographed. And this is a uniform of nurses. This was taken two years ago. In 2007, Uh, for about a year, I photographed these in order to make a collection of photos. And、uh, this project was already completed, but I still go to Hiroshima to photograph them because still this museum receives those items from believed family. And this year, I'll go to Hiroshima once again. And、uh, this one. Came to the museum just two years ago. So, still, these garment items survived on the、uh, bombing、uh, flowing into the museum. So, it's been a while since this、um, bombing, but、uh, still, those items are coming to the museum. And once they come to the museum, Those personal items, those personal government and items become public,、um, public ones. And so there's、uh, data of 71 years ago and how this girl died and who contributed. This item to the museum. So there is such a database, and you can access all of those information, but I don't refer to those information because I'm not photographing history. I want to、uh, encounter those、uh, uniforms or garments. I want to share at the same time with these、um, items and garments. So I am photographing the reality. And of course, I saw the different、uh, photographs、uh, of Hiroshima. But for me, those、uh, photographs are not the、uh, records. Those、uh, photographs do not claim anything. 
So I, by chance, have uh, met these um, items. So I am taking these photos as a personal relation to Hiroshima. And one thing I noticed, this is a silk garment. Uh, this is a blouse made out of uh, silk. And this is a, a blouse of a schoolgirl, I believe. And this uh, blouse was hung in the uh, vent of a bridge, and she's still missing. Only this brass was found, but she is still missing. So for me, I wanted to make this uh, brass in a good looking way so that anytime she can come back and wear it. And this was also taken two years ago. Last year marked the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II, and together with uh, modern museum of Hirosh modern art museum of Hiroshima, and also the prefecture museum, and uh, this um, rose was made uh, by a person who is still alive, and last year because of the seventies anniversary. The uh, there was an NHK TV program which features uh, this person who made this um, garment, and uh, still uh, people are coming to the museum, contribute these items and a garment to the uh, museum, and uh, TV. Um, program person came to me, why don't you meet uh, this person or these people who still come to the museum restoring the items left behind in the museum. But I didn't meet them, but uh, I decided to photograph these. And this pink color is uh, blood, comes from blood. I thought in the beginning this is pink color blood, but uh, this is a uh, blood from her um, sister uh, when she died, so this is a blood when she died. Well, I um, don't want to hear these stories, but um, I heard it. So uh, probably uh, this is a very precious item uh, for her because uh, he, she made it herself. And um, she decided to give it away to the museum. So the reality and what I do in uh, photographing, there's uh, all uh, there is a gap between what I do and also reality that can be found in these items. Um, so when it comes to Hiroshima, what I wanted to do is to liberate the city and uh, recently I started saying I want to personalize Hiroshima so Hiroshima of my own I want to make it my Hiroshima so this is I what I uh, think when I photographing these items so as I said um, another a piece, a one piece dress was a contribute to the museum and I accessed the database and I was surprised. Still such a well designed, high quality um, garment is owned by a believed family and they are still coming to the museum. I have not seen it face to face yet but uh, I will go to Hiroshima back again in September to take it and uh, take photo of, of, of that garment. And uh, since October last year to February this year, in the Los Angeles Paul, Paul Getty Museum, um, my exhibition was organized uh, with the title uh, Post War Shadow and curator for this uh, 
exhibition was in her thirties, in the middle of thirties, like thirty four years old or so. And she um, approached me saying, We have this uh, plan for exhibition, so why don't you join? I was applied because this is a US museum. Uh, they decided to organize an exhibit called the Post War Shadows. And this is pictures of our catalog. And um, my works from Yokosuka to uh, Hiroshima were exhibited in this uh, special exhibition. And I began taking photos in Yokosuka, and I was approached by a journal editor, and I started to photograph in Hiroshima. But now Hiroshima is something personal. So I am taking photos of Hiroshima as my own work, my personal work. And then, you know, this the exhibit uh, project came along. So it wasn't like a memorial of the 70 years anniversary of the end of the World War, but then I was so impressed. Such young woman in the U.S. is interested in these kind of stories. So young people, there's uh, many uh, young people who want to know about these things. And this is the last hall of the uh, Getty Museum. There's, there are seven uh, rooms. Uh, this room is called, or this room is for the exhibition of Hiroshima. And the biggest photo is like two meter high. And then um, this is a uh, colored in uh, light blue. And Paul Getty uh, Seven Museum start with a pink room and uh, this is a light blue colored museum and this is the exhibition called post war shadows then with this um is my work already completed i don't think so i am now at starting point this is the beginning of next journey and now in Tokyo, in Ginza district, there's a gallery called the Seido Gallery. So until August 27, um, I have exhibit for the Frida, Frida Kahlo. Why am I related to Frida Kahlo? It's because in the uh, uh, Venice uh, Venale, the curator for that approached me saying, why don't you photograph those items on government left behind by Frida Cargo? So I went to Mexico for three weeks and photographed these items. And Frida Carlo had a pediatric paralysis when she was six years old and she had a, a, a traffic accident when she was 18 years old and she died in her 40s. And uh, she is for me a representative person of uh, expression. And uh, she had many uh, scandalous uh, rumors and, and I went to Mexico and I thought I met a different uh, Frida Cargo. So I began taking photographs of the things which I left behind, starting from the Mother series, and I moved on to Hiroshima, and now the uh, Florida Carlo. So those items are still there. Although people who own them already died, but these are still there, they still exist, and there's certain meaning why they still here. And when I was taking the uh, items from the uh, Frida Kahlo, I felt that I was photographing um, items and garment which are left behind in Hiroshima. And I saw that Frida Kahlo is trying to communicate something to us. And also that I felt for taking photographs in Hiroshima. So those garments 
uh, wanted to convey uh, their messages to the next generation. So those things which are left behind, uh, they are left behind for the future. That's I uh, felt when I was taking those items of uh, Frida Kahlo. And she had a shorter right leg like this because of the pediatric palsy and she had a different height for high heel. And she was very strong and uh, she also supplemented her own body by using these um, different things. Of course, our body is fragile. It's a flesh, so it's disappear sometimes in the future. But these items can survive, survive longer than the flesh or blood. And for example, this is a, these are boots, pair of boots, uh, worn by Frida Kahlo. So Frida Kahlo died many many years ago, but still, a boots or a set of uh, pair of boots still stay here for the future. Think that's it. That's it. As I said, these are. Uh, don donors, uh, because for the case of uh, Hiroshima uh, series, these are the names of uh, donors. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. <laughs>